This is December 30th, 2010. We are in Natick, Massachusetts, and this tape is part of the Morris Institute Library's continuing Veterans Oral History Project. My name is Maureen Sullivan. Our cameraman is Dan McDermott of Natick Pegasus. We are privileged to have with us today Paul Haskell. Welcome, Paul. Thank you. May I ask when and where you were born? I was born July 5th, 1916, and Grant Street in Framingham. Where do you currently live? I live in Natick, Mass. What is your marital status? I'm a widower. Do you have children? I have two daughters. Mm -hmm. And grandchildren? Five grandchildren and two great-grandchildren. Okay. And where did you grow up? I grew up at 42 Second Street. In? In Natick. Natick. Okay. What was it like growing up there? Just a wild bunch of kids, you know, and mulling around, doing what we could do. That's about all. Okay. And what was your family background? Well, my father was uh, born in Nassau, British West Indies, mm -hmm. but um, my mother was born here in Natick of the Thomas family, mm -hmm. and uh, I've lived here, well, they've lived here since um, way back, can't think of the year, way back. Okay, we're gonna show right now a picture of your grandfather and his brother. This was taken in the early 1900s yeah. at the old uh, Grand Army of the Republic post in Natick Center, and yeah. this was your grandfather. My grandfather, Samuel Jefferson Thomas, mm -hmm. and my uncle, his brother, was um, Benjamin Thomas. Benjamin Thomas. And this photo was taken in 1941, and it shows another brother. Yeah, this photo was taken. This is my Uncle Al. He's mm -hmm. brother of Samuel and Benjamin. And those are my mother, mm -hmm. my aunt, and my other aunt, three of my mother's okay. siblings. Mm -hmm. And you are a Natick High School graduate. Yes. And from what class? 1936. I'm going to show another photo now. Yeah. This was taken uh, in 1936. This was 1936, this was taken. Uh -huh. um, and this is me. They all want to take a picture of me. Why, <laughs> I don't know. That's Bunner Marshall, the only fellow that's in it, and the rest of the girls. And I've forgotten. I've got to look at my class book to get their names mm -hmm. to remember who they were. Yes. And By face, I know them, but mm -hmm. I've forgotten their names. That was taken at the um, high Native. school when it was right on. Right in front of the high school. Right in front of the high school when mm -hmm. it was on East Central Street. And the church in the background was the Methodist church, wasn't Just it? Right, exactly. Okay. Yeah. And what did you do after high school? Did you work? After high school, I uh, worked pot caddying at Sandy Burr and mm -hmm. uh, different odd jobs around. I had no special job. And I understand that um, you had to hitchhike. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. We had to hitchhike from my house to Whelan, where Sandy Burr is located. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes, my brother would take my father's car and drive us up and then drive back so we'd have a spot to caddy. Mm -hmm. So we'd make sure we'd get a job. And I understand you had other duties when you were at Sandy Burr. Oh, yes, yes. I also worked in the locker room at Sandy Burr. The fellow hired me up there for a year mm -hmm. and um, worked up there. And now there's a uh, play up there a uh, month or so, two months or so ago, in the summertime. And the groundskeeper, the starter, wants me to come up there. They want to write a history of the Sandy Burr. Mm -hmm. And I, being the oldest one there, I remembered the fellow who's, who's up there now. His grandfather ran the place, Tony Barber. Amazing. Yeah. And what did you know about Europe and Asia at the time? Not too much. I heard about the wars, uh, Hitler trying to capture all of Europe and mm -hmm. the uh, Japanese trying to win over that side, mm -hmm. but uh, never thinking I was going to be in it. But. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and how did you hear about the attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941? I can't remember. I remember maybe it was by word of ear or something. I can't remember how I heard it, but it was disastrous. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, read it and looked at it. I guess it was on television, I think I saw it too. Television? 19, well it oh, was four, later. Yeah. The bombing of it. Mm -hmm. 
It was uh, what about uh, newsreels? No, when was the Pearl Harbor? Was uh, December 7th, 1941. 41, yes, yes. Okay. What did you think about it, and how was your life different after Pearl Harbor? Well, I really never thought it would affect me as going in the service or anything else, but mm -hmm. um, as it did, it affected me, and I went in the service and mm -hmm. um, was there for three years. Okay. Did you have family or friends who enlisted in the armed service? I had a younger brother who joined before I joined, mm -hmm. before I was drafted. And his name was? Richard W. Hasgill. Okay. And where, uh, what unit did he join? He was in the Medical Corps, 372nd Infantry in the Medical Corps. Uh -huh. And I also understand in addition to part-time jobs, you were uh, in beauty school. Yes, I went to beauty school in 39 and 40, mm -hmm. and become an operator, and uh, then I was called in the service. Uh -huh. You had to work a year under, as an operator under a hairdresser, mm -hmm. and I didn't do that, so when I come back, I applied for that. Okay. Now, just before you joined the war, and this was now late 1942, um, you were on the home front. Can you tell us a bit about rationing? Yes, it was very much a lot of rationing. We had to be very careful mm -hmm. what we could buy and, and where we could get it from and all that. So. Mm -hmm. Do you remember collecting scrap for the war effort, like paper or grease, so aluminum? Well, as I've forgotten, we probably did, but I have forgotten okay. about all that. It's only been 65 years or so. <laughs> mm -hmm. Were there newsreels at the movies that urged you to ration, recycle, collect scrap, be aware of enemy agents? Do you remember that? No, I don't. No. Yeah. And as the war progressed, what did you, um, we know what you thought of the Germans, what did you think about the Japanese? Well, I thought they were worse than Hitler, but um, that's the way it was. They tried to conquer all of the Europe, mm -hmm. all of that side of the Asia, mm -hmm. and uh, like Hitler, tried to conquer all of Europe. Okay. Now, where and when did you enter the military? I entered December 30th, 1941, 42, mm -hmm. 1942. And were you drafted or did you I enlist? I was drafted. You were drafted. Yes, yes. And aside from being drafted, why did you join at the time? Well, I had nothing else to do, but mm -hmm. I said I might as well go in the service. And, mm -hmm. and what branch did you join? I was in the uh, United States Army. Okay. Why did you choose the Army? Well, that's where most of the people here in Natick were drafted, were sent to mm -hmm. Fort Devens in the Army. So. And I believe there was a photo that you had of you and Warren Prescott. Mm. And did he join uh, the service at the same time? He and I joined the same time, Warren Prescott, yes. Okay. Uh, I should have had them out separate here. Mm -hmm. This is a big picture. There's Warren Prescott uh -huh. and I first joining. Mm -hmm. And he was a Natick, yes. Okay. Yes. And you, were, um, you mentioned just now that you were sent to Fort Devens for basic training. Yes. Uh, what was that like? It was a terrific training. Boot mm -hmm. camp and everything, it built us up strong and healthy. It was good training all through it. And we were given examinations at that time, and they mm -hmm. would, would point us out just what part of the branch of service we would be put in. Okay. And you ended up as a radio operator. Radio operator. And that was based on the tests. Yes. Okay, so... You now gone through basic. Uh, where were you sent next? We left Fort Devens and came uh, to Boston. Went to radio school, mm -hmm. and then uh, from Boston, I was at the Hotel Commonwealth station there, mm -hmm. fancy living. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then uh, we went to uh, radio school in Brighton. Uh -huh. Brighton had a radio communication center there. And Brighton that was High at Bright school. Brighton High School. Brighton okay. High School. Mm -hmm. And uh, we trained there, and then after we left Boston area, we took our ship to uh, Atlantic City Broadwalk, Atlantic City, New Jersey, mm -hmm. where we stayed there before we got ready to be shipped out okay. overseas. And when were you shipped out? Um, 
it must have been 40, it was 42, it must have been middle part of 43. Okay. And where were you shipped? We were shipped to Mostagman, Algiers, Mostagman, North Africa. Okay. We went through the Strait of Gibraltar into the Mediterranean Sea. And what did you do in North Africa? We were set up as a radio operator, signal set the course and everything. We were right on the Mediterranean Sea. Mm -hmm. And we stayed there a few months. Then we left Mostagman and went to Sardinia, the island of Sardinia. Mm -hmm. Stayed there a few months. Went to the island of Corsica, stayed there a few months, and then landed into Italy, Florence, Italy. And I understand that all that time you were not in hotels, you were staying in tents. In tents, in barracks, was, uh, right on the Mediterranean Sea, in rough uh, barracks and all that what stuff. What was that like? It was hectic. <laughs> we, uh, we got along, but we, uh, you know, it was just that way of living, we had nothing else. Mm -hmm. And were you, uh, when you were a radio operator, uh, what were the shifts like? Were, were you on four hours, eight hours? Eight hours. We worked eight hours at different intervals. You know, we had our breaks and stuff. We worked mm -hmm. eight hours, then another shift would come on and work. Okay. And what kind of messages were you receiving or transmitting? Well, the weather, did I, did I, did and all that, you know. It was a hectic chore to learn the master's code, mm -hmm. and uh, we got that. and. Uh, then we sent codes, the weather conditions, and everything else, what it was in our situation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you're in Italy, you're in Florence? No, I was in, uh, we landed in Florence, yeah, Florence, Italy. Mm -hmm. We stayed uh, that area, then we went up to, I've forgotten the other place, a little higher north, mm -hmm. and we stayed there. That was the furthest north until I had a chance of going to Venice and that mm -hmm. was way the northern part of Italy. Okay. And what was that like? It was great, great. Uh, we had a, had a chance of going to Italy, uh, Venice, Italy, or Paris, France, and I chose Venice because our principal at the Feltrell Junior High, Feltrell High School, Feltrell School, mm -hmm. told us that she and her sister had been there and how wonderful it was. So I wanted to see it personally myself, and that's why I went. Well, were you stationed in Venice, or was this R&R? No, &R? I had a trip. Okay. Yes, R&R. &R. All yeah. right. And you had a great time in Venice? Oh, beautiful. Rode mm -hmm. the gondolas and up and mm -hmm. down the canals, and it was great. Okay. Uh, different um, from working on the cold mm -hmm. and all that. I understand you also went to Rome? Yes, I had a trip to the Vatican and had the audience with Pope Pius. Mm -hmm. He was the Pope at the time. Right. And uh, it was great there. Went to see the Colosseum and all the things down in the Rome area. Mm -hmm. It was very interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. And let's see, I also remember you telling me that you also had, um, you attended a Bob Hope show. What was that like? Yes, they had the USO show canteen there. Mm -hmm. And um, it was really strange. We had all the people from the States coming over there and entertaining us. Mm -hmm. And they had one magician came up there and he performed that he had a handkerchief and he put through the handkerchief, mm -hmm. you know, and put it in his hand, spread it out, put it in his hand and put a, his finger up like that and left it like that, and put a match to it and lit it mm -hmm. and then took the handkerchief out perfectly whole, perfectly whole. <laughs> so we asked anyone up and so another fellow and I went up, got our new handkerchiefs out of our pocket and uh, did the same thing he did and put a mash to it and lit it, put mm -hmm. it out, spread it out, and there was a great big hole in the handkerchief. <laughs> <laughs> I have the handkerchief still at home, but uh, a hole burned in it. But how he did it, but he did it. With, <laughs> that's the magician that he is. Mm -hmm. he was. How did you hear about um, the war news? Through radio and officers telling us the uh, advanced training, that what's happening ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I understand that you had a little bit of hearing damage. Yes. How did that happen? They had one night they had jamming of the uh, earphones and it was so bad that a couple of fellows and I was one that couldn't hear it. I put my wash in my ear, couldn't hear it at all. And uh, I never complained. I just, with the other ear I could hear, you know, so we got through. Okay. And how long were you stationed in Italy? I was there about a year, two years, I think. Two years? Yeah. And what happened after that? We left, uh, we left uh, Italy and Naples coming back to the, uh, to the Philippines because mm -hmm. the war in Japan was going on. We were headed directly for the Pacific 
and uh, 10 days on the water. We heard news that the war in Japan had ended mm -hmm. and they diverted our ship back to Boston. Now let's backtrack a little bit. Uh, do you remember where you were uh, on VE Day, which would have been May 8th, 1945? Yeah. Um, you know, it seems like we must have been in Italy at the time, but I have, mm -hmm. yeah, we must have been, because after that war ended, then they were changing us to go right. to the mm -hmm. Pacific. And what happened after, okay, you're in, right at the Panama Canal. We didn't get that far. Didn't get that we far. We were headed that far, and uh -huh. been, we're four more days we got the Panama Canal. Mm -hmm. But after 10 days, the war ended in Japan, so they diverted our ship back up to Boston. And you went to, I believe it was Camp Mile Standish? Camp Mile, we yeah, landed in Boston mm -hmm. and took vehicles, truckloads to Camp Mile Standish. And where was that? Someone asked me before, and I don't think they've torn the camp down and everything, <laughs> but it was part of, outside of Boston. Mm -hmm. Wasn't too far. Okay. And, uh, and when did you get out of the military? In 1945, uh, November. Mm -hmm. 1945, three mm -hmm. years. Three years. All right, and what rank did you uh, have? I was corporal most of the time. I was corporal the whole time I was in the service. Okay, do you mm -hmm. remember what, uh, what medals you had? I had two or three medals on my uniform, but I've forgotten mm -hmm. exactly what they were for. Okay. Yeah. And mm -hmm. what, were, what were your feelings about going home? I was happy, elated, that's why I say when I got home, they asked me, was there anything wrong? No, nothing's wrong. I was afraid they were going to keep me another day. So <laughs> I said, nothing's wrong. I'm fine. Let me out. So even though you had the hearing damage. A hearing, yes. I, and even after I got out, they told me I could still apply. But I said, it's gone by now. I, mm -hmm. Yeah. And you said that after the war, you used a GI Bill. Yes, to finish my, uh, my hairdresser's uh, schooling. Mm -hmm. I went to Will Mansfield Academy in Boston, finished that for three months, I think. And then I took my hairdresser's license and become a hairdresser. And where were you a hairdresser? In Boston all the time. Mm -hmm. Tremont Street, uh, Mass Avenue. Mm -hmm. I worked with one of the biggest shops in Boston, Danny's, his and hers. Mm -hmm. And when did you retire? I retired five years ago now. Amazing. I worked until I was 89, I think. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. uh, when did you marry? I married in 1952. And who did you marry? I married Evelyn J.L. Brown mm -hmm. in Haskell. She was from Bedford Hills, New York. And uh, what about your brother, the one who was in the medical court? Did he get out okay? Yes, well, he uh, finished his medical career and then he went into undertaking business and he had finished up with two establishments in Long Island, New York, Amityville and, and uh, Wyandanche in New York, mm -hmm. two places. He had two beautiful places and he got my daughter, youngest daughter, into the business because he said she had the right attitude to be an mm -hmm. undertaker so he got her into it. What about your brother Ed? Ed worked for the town of Natick. They call him mayor of the Natick. He worked. <laughs> He knew everybody in Natick, and he was the mayor of Natick, but uh, he died, uh, oh, he died in Natick Glenmoss Hospital mm -hmm. several years ago, I've forgotten the date. Now, he was also a World War II veteran. Do you remember what he did? No, Ed didn't go in the service. He, he did was not. In the, he was in the, uh, they had the, uh, that little camp they used to send kids to, mm -hmm. USO camp or ah, some okay. camp like that they used to send kids to. Mm -hmm. Now, tell, uh, you were telling me right before the interview about a descendant of one of the Thomases becoming an admiral. Tell us a little more about that. Gerald Thomas, uh, he was my cousin. He, uh, his father, Walter Thomas, is son of Benjamin Thomas. Mm -hmm. And uh, Gerald went through high school, very prominent. He went to uh, Yale University. and. Uh, in the Navy, and mm -hmm. then he became Rear Admiral of the Navy. Mm -hmm. And he was an ambassador to Ghana, but one of the presidents, I've forgotten who, which president nominated him as ambassador to Guyana. Okay. Now, uh, did you join any um, reserve unit 
not any after that. How about um, any organizations such as? I joined as the uh, American Legion mm -hmm. and have been a member of that ever since. I'm an honorary member now. Okay. Mm -hmm. And let's see, you are also still an active golfer uh, for many years. I love years. golf. That was my <laughs> one ambition to be a professional golfer, but I never <laughs> did make it. I made 79 my lowest score, but uh, and never made a hole in one, but come close to it. Oh um, my! And you were also a marshal for the. I was a marshal for 26 years in New York Westchester Golf Classic mm -hmm. in New York, and uh, enjoyed that until old age crept in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I understand you got to see some pros. Yes, I met Tiger Wood. I met all the big professionals. Personally, I met Tiger's father and mother both, and uh, mm -hmm. had a nice time. Okay, so uh, I know by the time World War II, well, around 1950, both your parents had passed on. 1948, uh, my father died. Mm -hmm. 1940, my father died. Mm -hmm. and my mother died in 48. Mm -hmm. uh, 58, uh, 58, she died. Okay. 40. And, Mm -hmm. 1558, yes. Okay. And as far as uh, your children, were, uh, did any of your children express interest in joining the military? No, no. Paul and Linda, uh, as I said, Paula had three children, married mm -hmm. and lived in Med Medford. And uh, Linda married and lives in uh, New York now, but she went through undertaking school. She's an undertaker. Mm -hmm. She went through hairdressing school. She's a hairdresser. Mm -hmm. She went to Mary Kay Cosmetics, so she's a Mary Kay Cosmetic Consultant. Mm -hmm. So all that works into her business. Mm -hmm. What about any of your grandchildren? My three, Paula's three children went through college and they're, one, one is married and the other, they have two children. One, the oldest one, the youngest one had mm -hmm. a child. And then, uh, uh, Linda's children are in college now. They're, one is in the University of New Hampshire and the other is going to Drexel College in Pennsylvania, Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to you and um, your wartime experiences. Is there anything that you want to um, say to those who are going to be viewing the DVD or this interview about your war effort? The only thing I can say, it was a wonderful experience, a healthy experience, and um, I enjoyed being of service for the United States, mm -hmm. being in the Army, helping end the war and so forth. Okay. Anything else before, um, any other comments you would like to make? No. Well, Paul Haskell, on behalf of the Natick Veterans Oral History Project, we thank you for your participation and have a good new year. Thank you, Marie. I appreciate it mm -hmm. very much. Okay. Mm -hmm.